How are you, Bella? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Maybe you should introduce yourself first, Bella, to my viewers in Indonesia because most of them don't know you. Honestly, I just know you like several months ago when I read your books, Konstantin Stanilowski, that for me, uh, that's the book that I can understand Stanislavski easier. Because in my country, the Stanislavski's book is only translated, only three that translated in, in Bahasa. Only uh, Actor Prepares, My Life in Art, and Building Character. The creating role is not already translated. Oh. But yeah, the, the, the translation is little bit hard to understand because I think like you say in your book that Stanislavski uh, write the the book like a novel you know so we have to dig more to understand about what Stanislavski said but thanks to your book I can understand Stanislavski better now and I think that's make me think like I think I have to invite Bella Merlin sometimes in my Bincang after to talk about acting, to talk about Stanislavski and talk about, yeah, uh, anything about acting. But before that, uh, would you introduce yourself to my viewers, Bella? Of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on this platform. Uh, my name is Bella Merlin. I am an actor, a writer, um, a professor of acting at the University of California, Riverside. And um, my passion for acting and my very strong desire that actors have their voice recognized in scholarly writings has led me to write a series of books over the years. And um, I had trained in the UK I'd worked in the UK and then after I'd been working for about three and a half years, I had the chance to go and do graduate training in Moscow at the State Institute of Cinematography. And it was there that I really understood more fully what Stanislavski's methodology system was all about. And so a few years ago, I was asked by a publisher called Nick Hearn Books, who's a big theatre publisher in the UK, if I would write something called the Stanislavski Toolkit. So basically, I looked at everything that Stanislavski uh, had written that was uh, um, translated into English, and I pulled out as many of the recurring themes, ideas, tools to make it as user-friendly as possible, because one of my acting masters in Russia had referred very much to a toolkit. What do you need for each job? And just as if you were um, a carpenter, you might use a hammer or a chisel or a saw, depending on what the actual job is. So with the actor, you don't have to use all the tools for every job. Sometimes the character will be much more accessible to you, so you don't have to do much digging around to find how you connect to it. Other times it won't be so straightforward. So that's how the Complete Stanislavski Toolkit came about. Um, and I've written various other things which we'll get to if we need to get to. And so that's me, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's so interesting because just for your information, my, in my country, the people that understand really about Stanislavski is almost none. There is, there is, there is nothing people that really understand and uh, know about Stanislavski. Because uh, uh, my friends, my colleagues uh, once said to me that if you want to understand Stanislavski, you need years to understand. It. It's not just uh, one semester or or uh, just just uh, one year, you need more to, to understand the Stanislavski. And uh, that's why uh, I think that Stanislavski in my country, the method, the system is uh, so popular. Like almost all of the actors in Indonesia use Stanislavski. Either they, 
uh, know about Stanislavski or not because sometimes when I interviewing in bincang actor like this Uh, the actor that not come from academy, not come from a campus uh, and learn about acting, uh, and they ne- they they never don't know about about Stanislavski. They use uh, Stanislavski method without they even know. That's why I, I then think like, oh maybe this is why Stanislavski even it's already almost like hundred years the hundred years old the uh, age and then. Oh, that's why it's still relevant to use it like until now. Uh, but maybe this is will be the uh, question from uh, my viewers about what is exactly the uh, the essence of the Stanislavski system. Like I know that Stanislavski is growing. the The system is growing. Like uh, in the first book, the actor prepares. They he said. Uh, use the emotional memory and then in the other book he said don't use the emotional memory use the other like his collection or active analysis uh, what happened uh, can can we can we use the uh, actor prepares to learn about Stanislavski or when Stanislavski already uh, write the other book like uh, the creating a role we don't need to read the actor prepares and building character and the other books so what what is what is the sense of system stanislavski stanislavski system Bella? okay so i'm going to address this from two different perspectives one is what you might need for actor training and mm-hmm. one is what you might need for actually getting inside a character for film television theater Part of the reason he's so difficult to really understand from the books that he's written and why I can understand people would say it would take years to understand it is because what he was trying to do for the first time ever, or really, yeah, I'll say the first time ever, was systematically and comprehensively pull apart human behavior in order that actors then could put it back together to create a sense of spontaneity in the moment of performance. But to do that, to put something in a linear form, which is what a book is, when actually it's three-dimensional and it's messy and it's a bit emotional and it's a bit physical and it's a bit psychological and it's a bit imaginative, it's almost always destined to, if not fail, at least be compromised. So, What happened was because there was a gap between an actor prepares being published and the later books, everybody grabbed it to actor prepares, the heart of which is about accessing your emotions. As actors, the tools of our trade are our feelings. How do we feel about things and how do we, because the the heart of being human is about feelings. We are sentient beings. So people latched on to emotion memory thinking this was the whole of the system before he had a chance to say, no, it's, it's, it's all these other things as well. It's how I work with props. It's how I work with lighting effects. It's how I obviously work with my fellow actors. I'd even go on to say now it's how you work with the audience. So um, it's a, it was all a little bit unfortunate, but inevitable that it would all be fractured, misunderstood. So on the one hand, the four elements that I, I use all the time from the essence of Stanislavski's work, and I call them the pillars upon which they are built. First of all is relaxation. We want to be in the frame of mind where we are playful, physically relaxed, mentally relaxed. We're just up for getting on with the work of acting. The second one is concentration or focus or attention, however you want to call it. And that is now I'm just going to um, use my creative energy to focus on this role. Then there is observation, all the information I'm getting from the world around me and from how I'm observing my own responses to things, how I'm observing other people's responses, how I'm observing light, how I'm observing nature, how I'm observing art, and then imagination. So all four of those pillars, relaxation, attention or focus or concentration, um, 
observation and imagination. They're, if you like, the, 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 the nuts and bolts of it. And part of the reason why I think everybody's doing it anyway is because we do all those things as human beings anyway. So that's the essence of starting off actor training. Then when it comes to actually embodying a role at its most simple, and this is just my take on it, and anybody approaching Stanislavski is going to have their own take on it, and that's the point, really. He's talking about human behavior, human feelings. So each of us as individuals, we're going to approach it differently and find different things of use within it. But I would say what I always do as an actor or a director or an actor trainer is... I mine the text for all the riches that it's going to give me through very intensive text analysis, uh, mental reconnaissance, whatever you want to call it, just getting inside the text. So I'll break it down into its bits of action, its beats of action, where I'm looking for what's the direction in which the river of the play is flowing and when does the course of the river completely change direction. So I'm not looking for every little kink in the bank I'm looking for the big changes in direction and they'll usually come when another character comes onto the scene or leaves the scene or a new topic of conversation comes up or a character makes a big decision big moment of decision and that then changes the atmosphere for everybody so I'll always break the script down into its bits of action because I like to do it for me it's not intellectual it's imaginative and then I'll use whatever other tools I need. What the basics, what do I want? What does my character want? How do they go about getting it? What stops them from getting it? Who stops them from getting it? What situation stops them from getting it? How do they overcome those obstacles or not? And how do they, what are the, what are the little actions they take in order to try and get what they want? And again, we're all doing it all the time, which is why everybody's, most actors are probably using Stanislavski's system, whether they know it or not, because all he was doing was trying to systematize human behavior. So we're all doing it because we're all human and we all behave. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's my first inroad. So is, <laughs> I can, you just tell me if that, if you want more or less, well, you can't get less because I've already said it, but you know, you can, what, what would be useful for, for you from what I've just said. Yeah, uh, uh, I get the point, like uh, Stanislavski trying to systematize the human behavior. And I think that's, that's why, like you say, uh, Stanislavski is still relevant till now because human be behavior, I think it's not changed too much. And even in a different culture, like, like uh, from wherever we are, we are still a human. We are still living in a world that uh, we still have uh, common behavior and common way to do the behavior. And we know that <clears throat> uh, when uh, somebody do the behavior, it's because they have the, the cultural and, and like the, the two dimensional that Stanislavski said like physiologists, psychologists, and uh, uh, sociologists. I got the point. The point is the human behavior. Uh, I want to ask you, I want to ask you about the beat. I have already asked you about the beat first. You already explained to me about the beat. And you say, it's better to do the beat, to, to understand about the beat. Because I read that there is no translation even in English about the beat itself. So what is, what is the beat, Bela? So the, the original Russian word just meant chunk, a chunk of text, like a chunk of cheese or a chunk of cake, a bit. And it can be long, it can be short. It's like musical, a music. Is the musical phrase long or is the musical phrase short? So it's really just a chunk of the conversation or the scene. So you could say we've probably already had two or three beats or bits or chunks in our conversation already. We started off with our introduction. Well, actually we started off with our, is the Zoom working or not? Then we had our introduction. Then we had you setting up what the first question might be. So we've already had a number of little chunks within our dialogue. 
We've still got this, the overall aim of our dialogue, I guess, is that at the end of it, we'll both understand a bit more about Stanislavski from each other's cultural perspective. Um, so it's really just the, um, the, 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 the bit of, it doesn't even need to be text because if you're looking at a film, it might be mainly um, visuals. It might be the script direction. So it's up until something major happens. So suppose now while we're having this dialogue, suddenly I'm picking up my tea and I suddenly spill my tea. So now suddenly hot tea is all over me. And now suddenly I have to do something else or uh, my um, husband comes in saying, there's a fire, there's a fire. Or my dog suddenly is sick on the carpet or whatever. If another event happened that then changed where our connection was going that will be a new bit of action so bit or beat it doesn't really matter i mean as i say the the russian original uh, kusok bit um has been translated over the time over different times as beat or unit and they're all the same thing i don't mind bit or beat bit is more accurate to the translation from russian into english beat is quite handy because it sets up musicality and I think all we're doing when we're breaking down the script is trying to find its musical rhythm because the rhythm is going to tell us what the emotional pulse is so rhythm and emotion and feeling are so interconnected because they're all to do with our heartbeat our breath pattern etc we we are animals of rhythm by nature mm -hmm. um Unit, I don't like quite so much. And it gets called unit in the usual translation of an actor prepares. And the, uh, I mean, it's fine, but it sounds too regular. It sounds like every unit must be a page and a half or 14 lines or, you know, it just sounds too scientific for me. I prefer bit or beat. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. The point of it is to find what the emotional um, inner life of the script is so that you can understand a bit more what's happening to you as the actor as you're playing it and then obviously what what you hope the audience will experience as a result of that rhythmic emotional journey you're having does that make sense yeah 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 uh, uh, okay and then now about the uh, spontaneity you say that Stanislavski trying to make the system, the, the, the system to know about the human behavior so uh, we can, the actor can show this spontaneity by break down the script and find the beat and etc. But how to, how to show spontaneity when we already know even the chunks and the beat, how to find this spontaneity in Stanislavski's system? So again, I can only go with how I interpret it or how I use it and other people may say different things and other people may experience different things at the end of the day it's a little bit like the musician who's learnt the concerto or the sonata um, and they know every musical beat and they know every note but in the moment of playing they allow the breath and the experience to ignite, to fill in that little bit that's missing. They've, so they've done all the prep, they've done all the, the um, reading and the analysis, the imagination work. Then in the moment of actual performing, allowing whatever the breath is going to do to you to be the moment of spontaneity. And you know, it comes and goes. Um, I know before I went to Russia and the work I did in the UK for three and a half years, I don't think it even occurred to me to be spontaneous. I think I'd learn my lines, I'd learn my blocking, I knew exactly what I was supposed to do when I was supposed to do it. And it was dead. It was boring. So it was like a tuning fork that was being hit, but there was no vibration, no sound. And I think once I'd done the Russian training, but my, the training continues forever. I mean, uh, the last few years I've been working with a company called Shakespeare and Company and uh, the main art founding artistic director there, Tina Packer, works a lot with the breath. And for her, that you know, I've really learned to understand that 
the the spontaneity is the unpredictability that you allow it's the moment of risk it's the moment of vulnerability where you don't actually know how the words are going to come out of your mouth because you don't actually know what information you're going to subtly pick up from your fellow actor or from the gasp of the audience or from the airplane flying overhead just as you're filming. Every moment we're, like they say, you can never cross the same river twice. The water is always flowing. We can never breathe the same breath twice. So for all the work we've done, that moment of living that performance on that moment with whatever this instrument is going through, what we've had for breakfast, how much sleep we had, whether we've just had a, an easy journey to the theater or the film set, or that there was a terrible traffic jam, you know, all these things become part of the essence of the spontan spontaneous moment. Okay. If okay. We allow it. You, you say about the breath. How, how do we know that this is the breath? And uh, when, when we know that this is the breath, how, how we can understand that, okay, you got the breath and you just, uh, you're just just doing it and the breath is, will, will naturally come out. Or are we also uh, designing the, the breath and uh, preparing the breath or it's just naturally come out? What is the breath actually? You know, again, it's this subtle differentiation between actor training or the preparation you do on the character and the moment of performance. So in actor training, of course, you will have done some breath, some voice work, breath work, you'll have done whatever, you know. But at the end of the day, we all, or most of us are breathing without thinking about it too much most of the time. So it's allowing that... Um, huh, honesty, that um, presence. So you don't have to prepare, you know, uh, the preparation, you don't have to be playing the preparation at the moment of performance. You do it all and then forget it all. So often when I'm working and I know, you know, please understand half of what I'm saying is my aspiration to what I would like to be doing. It's not how I, or I'd, if only I could act like this all the time, but you know, we all have inbuilt safety mechanisms where, Oh, I don't want to risk too much in case I screw it up. But you know, actually that's what really exciting acting is, is when you dare to walk the tightrope. Um, uh, but um I would I wouldn't say you prepare the breath. You don't. You've prepared everything else and then you go out in front of the camera or onto the stage and you let it all be there. In the way that I suppose the superb flute player, they know when they need to take the breath to do the phrasing, but they're not worrying about the breath in the actual performance they're letting the music fill their spirit and fill the flute and fill the auditorium. They've done the prep. They don't have to worry about the prep in the moment. Unless there's one or two moments when it's like, I really know I need a huge amount of breath to get through this phrase, or I need a huge amount of breath to let this yell to the heavens, reach the heavens. But in general, it's the, the breath is the the unknown. I don't know how the breath's going to come in and out of my body while we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, the dream. Yeah, yeah. It's the ideal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, because I think, I don't know, I have read it in uh, Dream of Patient, Lee Strasberg, that the one that uh, people worrying about Stanislavski is, what if the Stanislavski method make everybody play the same when they have a same character. You, you know? can't. You're all different. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. All different. And this is what the work on the imagination mm -hmm. and, uh, well, the work on all of it, all the self-work is allowing yourself to be accessible enough to your imagination, your sensibilities, your value systems, your uh, playfulness, 
no two actors will ever perform the same because no two actors are the same, mm. thankfully. So oh. I don't think we have to worry that if we all follow Stanislavski's system, we'll all start acting the same. It's impossible. Mm. What do you think about about the the fact tank of idea that Lee Strasberg once said that he wants to when the actor perform in the first performance and then in the in the in the tenth performance they are always playing well. I don't know uh, what is the parameter about about well, but I think well is at least uh, better than the first. But Faktangov said that it must be played differently be, between the first and the second and the third and the other performance, even that is uh, one character. Well, what do you think about the Faktangov uh, idea about the, the acting? It reminds me of how I think I used to act before I went and did the training in Russia. I would do, I would, perfect my performance during rehearsals and then I would deliver my perfected performance in performance. Uh, and it was dead. I was bored with my own self. I don't think I really, really, really listened to my fellow actors. I don't think I really listened to myself. I don't think I really listened to the words. I polished what I thought would be a good performance. After the training in Russia, when I realized, in fact, what I write about this in my first book, actually, Beyond Stanislavski. So at the end of the first term, and our acting masters were really tough. And at the end of the first term, we all had to go in one by one to have the, our master professor, uh, our master teacher, tell us how we were doing. And there were 12 of us and um, I was the last to go in and people were coming out saying, oh yeah, no, he said, uh, he said, I'm doing really well. And um, yeah, he's very encouraging. Now bearing in mind, I'd already been working as a professional for three and a half years. I'd already trained for four years. I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought, well, my God, if he's telling them they're brilliant, he's going to tell me I'm amazing. <laughs> what happened was, um, I went in and he said, I don't know what to do with you. You're trying so hard to get everything right that I can't work with you. I don't think you're an actor. So what I think you need to do is go back to England over the holiday and decide actually whether you really want to come back or not. And I was shocked. And I had to go and think deeply about what he was saying and realize Doing a good performance isn't acting. Okay. Incarnating a three-dimensional feeling, thinking, imagining, uh, exciting person is acting. And, you know, I, I, I came back from, from Moscow, wow, I don't know, 20, 20 something years ago, and I'm still learning that. It's a, every time I go on stage or in front of the camera, I have to fight the little part of me that wants to get it right and go, that's not good acting. That's just being a good behaved person. Good acting is daring to let each performance have its own spirit, its own vibration. And it comes and goes. You know, it depends on the character. It depends on the scene. Depends on what the uh, the character is going through at a particular time, and it depends on what the nature of the script is. Sometimes, if it's a very uh, consciously crafted comedy, you almost have to play it to within a nanosecond of of the timing in order for that rhythm to exist. So, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any hard and fast rules. And I don't think Stanislavski's system is a hard and fast thing. I think it's there as guidelines for us to understand how to be as human as we can when we know every line of our script, when we know every movement of the choreography. How do we still keep it adventurous? Yeah, I get the point. That's, that's cool. That, that's, that's really cool about the incarnation, about that. That acting is not just become 
anybody, not just become somebody else, but like you say, trying to uh, show the 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 life of of the human, not 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 trying to not trying to look that it's created. It is created, but somehow it should not be like created. Stanislavski called it the life of the human spirit. Mm -hmm, yeah. How do we incarnate the life of the human spirit? And spirit's really great because you can't capture, what is spirit? It's intangible. It's, it's the cobwebs, the spider's webs of life, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Play, okay, being yeah. playful. Yeah, 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 you're right. Play is being playful. Okay, Bella. Uh, the next question is, some people say that Stanislavski method is outdated. What do you think about that? It is really outdated or it is still relevant until today, the Stanislavski? If being human is outdated, so is Stanislavski's system. It's, for me, it's just like the alphabet. It's just like ABC. It's just... It's the bedrock upon which everything else is built. So I don't know how it can be outdated. Yeah, 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 you're right. Maybe once all acting is being done by artificial intelligence, it will be outdated, but yeah. hopefully we never get to <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty scary, right? When the actor substitute <laughs> with the artificial Okay, some words in your book I don't understand, like creative state and then uh, bifocal. Maybe you can you can explain to me what is what is creative state. In my country, there is a magic if, mm -hmm. like what if I do that? What if I in that kind of uh, condition? What if I have this kind of problem? What if my character? Uh, face the other people what is the creative state well you know again i don't think we could i i wouldn't want to be too prescriptive about what any of these things mean as i understand it the creative state is when you've done all those things when you are relaxed you're focused you're being imaginative and playful and um Yeah, the, the magic if is, is the invitation to the imagination, the invitation to play. What if this cardboard box really were a pirate ship? What if this rug on the floor really were um, a hole into the center of the universe or the planet? So what if, magic if, the invitation to the imagination to play? So for me, I know I'm in a creative state when actually... Um, I'm open to my partners. I'm open to the director. I'm open to what might happen that's unexpected and um, an invitation to play. And I know I'm not in a creative state if I'm fixated on getting things right or things aren't, that wasn't how I thought this should go. That's not how I'll, I wouldn't choose this play to be interpreted this that's when i know i'm closing so for me if i'm in a creative state i'm open to whatever invitations may come along that will serve the story or the script or the character or the play and i'm in a not creative state if i'm blocking off if i'm closing down oh, okay that's my interpretation but it's all the thing it's all the things in the toolkit relaxation concentration imagination observation they're all ready to go that you've 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 warmed up the the clay ready to make the pot there, there is a lot of kind of method in this world like there is Stanislavski there is Lee Strasberg Stella Adler Vaktangov and so on for you what do you think which one is Is the best. Is there any 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 best method in the world? Like, if you use this method, you prob you 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 must be success as an actor. You can be acting so good. Is there any the best method in the world? Think, I don't think so. Well, not for for me personally. I don't even think like that. Mm -hmm. I think more in terms of what. What are my blocks as a creative artist at this point in my life? Would it be helpful for me to do some 
Meisner work. Would it be helpful for me to do some clowning? Four years ago, when I went and did the uh, Shakespeare and Company, as I mentioned, I work with them a lot. They're in Massachusetts in America. They do a month long training every January for mid-career professionals. And so I went and did that in 2016. And at that point I knew I'd, it's not that I'd plateaued in my acting. I just knew I was possibly getting a little bit head led with, with my Stanislavski work. And I wanted to get back into my body. So that was a lot of stage combat, um, clowning, uh, obviously Shakespeare's text, structure of the verse, um, working with the actor audience relationship, Elizabethan dance, because I just knew that at that point I'd, I'd got a little stuck, not stuck, just, I just wanted to play a bit. So now, uh, and I got a huge amount out of that. So, um, their training is based in link later voice work. It's all the teachers pull from all their own different places. Stanislavski barely got mentioned, though the, her the, the company was founded on a, a sort of a heritage of Stanislavski way back when. Um, but so I don't, I, it, again, it's, we're all so human. How could there be one system that would work for everybody? Like there's no one recipe book that everybody should follow and then become a brilliant cook. Um, there's no one conductor that every musician should work with and then they'll be a brilliant orchestral player. You know, it's, um, I think it would be a bit scary if it was like, if you don't do this method, you will never be a great actor because we're all different. Yeah, yeah. So it's not about uh, the best method. There is there is nothing, uh, there is none of best method. All the method is might be best according to the actor and the character. Which one is the fit one? I, I also think it's, absolutely. I also think it's to do with not, for me personally, not getting fixated on a method. Mm -hmm. Um it's more a question of how, how do I keep myself imaginative, physically uh, playful, um, energetically connected. And I get a little nervous of people that either patent their method. This is the Merlin method of acting and it's mine. All the methods are the same. They all lead to how do we be organic, excited listeners in the moment of performance, listening to our own words, listening to our own breath, listening to our partner. And it could be Meisner, it could be Uta Hag, and it could be Stella Adler, it could be Lee Strasberg, it could be Stanislavski, it could be Michael Chekhov, it could be, it could be any, anyone. At the end of the day, what do I need to truly listen to the moment of performance. So the acting is not just about being other, like you say. How can we say that you, you do a good acting or you do a bad acting? If you say that, yeah, everything is good. Uh, every method is good. How can we fail you? How, how can we uh, give a value to uh, a acting? If as an audience member, mm -hmm. you experience something when you're watching this person, you either have a new thought pop into your head or your heart is shifted or your breath changes or shivers go down your spine or you laugh. I think the test of good acting lies in the audience rather than in the method of the actor who's doing whatever they're doing. And, you know, I, th I would suggest that actors, this, the same great actor can do some brilliant performances and some terrible performances. Um, and it might be because the, the role really suited them on one occasion and didn't on another. The director really 
understood how to work with them on one occasion and really didn't on the other that who knows um so um i think it's up to the the audience to determine whether they found that performance exciting compelling thought provoking moving funny okay but the point the purpose of of the 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 actor is is not to be different from himself but trying to touch the audience is that what you say so when we able to touch the audience then that's the moment you do a good acting so michael chekhov said and i'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. that you can only ever be yourself you've only got your body your imagination your history your face um your breath your so the raw materials are always going to be the same so um the piano is always going to be a piano it's never going to be a violin or a guitar but I can play jazz on the piano. I can play Beethoven on the piano. I can play folk tunes on the piano. I can play the higher part of the keyboard. I can play the lower part of the keyboard. I can play with one finger. How I play the instrument is going to be different each time. So it, for me, it's not that we, we always play ourselves or we always transform. It's a, it's a merger of the two. And I think it was Michael Chekhov who also said, it's as if um, the playwright, the play is the father, the actor is the mother, and together they create this child, which is your performance. And so it's a bit of playwright and the playwright may never have met you in his or her or their entire life. So they're not asking you to play you, they're giving you a story. They're all, it doesn't matter, they don't necessarily care who you are, it's their story. You take your raw materials and you wed it to the script that the writer's given you and the merger of the two creates this other essence, which is fundamentally you been in a whole set of circumstances you may never have been in before. Um, so I think it's a bit more subtle, it's a bit more messy than you're always playing yourself or you're always transforming. It's, it's, um, it, it's, an, it's a weave, it's a weave of, you know, I once described it, but it was a very poor description. I said, it's a bit like we're a box of building bricks and we can build a castle or we can build a shopping mall or we can build a schoolhouse or we can build a tower, or we can build a mosque, or, you know, it's the same set of building blocks, but what we're building is gonna be different each time. Does okay. that make sense? That's, but it's that's, just my take. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, anyway, every time I do Binchang Aktor, I always believe that every people, every human have their own thought about acting, and there's nothing wrong about about that because like what my teacher said that the acting method is personal it's not like you say it's not one and only method people can there have have their own method have their own system to find the best way to uh reach the good acting so that's okay thank you so much bella this conversation is make me wow blowing my mind and thank you so much bella Thank you so much, Ben. It's been a real pleasure and yeah. and thank you so much for inviting me. This is it's it's so good to having you in this uh, uh meeting and uh thank you for your books. Your book is really helped me to understand more about Stanislavski and about the other method and thank you for what you say about the incarnation about the real acting is thanks thank once again, Bella. Thanks once again, Bella. Good luck.